welcome to this Sunday's garden vlog. It's a good day because I'm going bulb shopping and every year I say no you know what I'm not buying any more bulbs especially when I'm planting it I'm like why did I buy all these bulbs well here we are <laughs> here we are again I'm just having a cup of tea because Karen is on her way and I think we're gonna go to Johnstown garden centre today and then the orchard because it's kind of on a nice loop you can drive actually just for anyone who's in that area if you drive to Johnstown Garden Centre, there's a lovely back road drive to the orchard in Selbridge. So I think Johnstown, is it neat? No, it's not as far as nice. It's just kind of, it's like 20 minutes off the M50 on the N7. And then, yeah, there's a back road from Johnstown, Google Maps will give it to you, to the orchard. And it's a lovely, it's this time of year, it's like real autumnal and it's all like countryside, countryside and it's just lovely out that direction. I won't say a miserable day but it's a real autumnal day outside. Um, I'll have a little poke around the garden before I go. Now I did buy, I'm just going to put my cup of tea down. I did buy some perennial tulips from Mr Middleton. I bought them online and I'm just waiting for them to arrive because tulips have gone expensive. Well, they, they, they're expensive. Some tulips like you'll get like maybe two or three years out of them and they will have a nice strong stem and then after that they tend to just go a bit piddly, bendy stems and not as good. So I wanted to, like we spent so much money on like bulbs, um, I wanted to have a shot at the perennial tulips so I got a red variety and I'll put a screenshot on screen and I got this orangey yellowy one as well and there oh I got another one did I get three designs designs I don't think you call plants designs varieties basically I wanted it's like if you're gonna buy bulbs try and get ones that are gonna last a bit longer um and you'll enjoy them because like that I have tulips from years ago out the front and yeah I saw Monty Don throws them into like a meadow which I think is a great idea like so your old tulip bulbs um, he had put them into this kind of like a meadow and then he puts replants new ones but I don't want to keep kind of doing that so I did buy some perennial tulips so we'll see how we get on with them and um, they haven't arrived yet and once they come I'm going to do a red raised bed and um, I was actually looking back at my own spring garden videos from earlier in the year to see what was growing and where and it was just giving me so much joy and also I'm waffling now but so spring gardens are planted in autumn and when everything starts to die back and you know November, December, January it's really you know dark and miserable it's that you're planting a little bit of hope aren't you you're planting a little bit of you know yeah, to, to garden is to plan for the future I don't know, get philosophical <laughs> Oh, if it's a miserable day where you are and you're feeling a bit the planning for spring bulbs might give you a bit of joy too. Um, Miss Blondie, I can see, is after coming in. So let's grab the tea and have a little potter around. It has been raining a lot. So it's probably the best time to go out and do a bit of weeding, actually. Now I'm out in the good court. Actually, it's raining. But hang on, I'll stand under here still yeah <laughs> oh we're getting messy now but i still have lots of greenery like it's not too bad tree update this one is starting to kind of fall now some leaves on the ground but not too bad so far um so yeah this bed i want to put the red tulips in this one and then some alliums and some other bits um i still have some dahlias yeah, there's a few little bits come on into the greenhouse actually where it is not raining I don't remember this happening last year now I did forget to water these but these have started to go red but I don't know are you dying my friend or is this what you do this time of year um granted I did I let it go without water it got stressed but then I watered it it's okay like this one isn't really doing it but forever giving abuse to geraniums. I think we have, yes we do. Ms. Blondie is going to join us. You coming in? Blondie's being very nosy. She's like, 
Why is the ground wet outside? She's not, she's not a fan of the cold weather like me. Are you come and say hello? She's beside me. Now, before I go bulb shopping, I did kind of make a bit of a mental list to see what I want. So, because I already have, I had a little look back on things I already have in the garden. What I loved, what worked well, and what I kind of want some more of. So, one thing, I underestimated the, f the appreciation for, what am I trying to say, is snowdrops. Snowdrops, I had some snowdrops in the front and I definitely want to plant more, maybe in the little woodland area beside me because they flowered, I swear to God, from like late January until March. They were one of the first to pop up. And same as some of the crocus as well. I don't have enough snowdrops and crocus and they they kind of come first. Um, and there is nothing like the joy of everything is dead in January and then you just see the green foliage and the little white snowdrop like the little flower that does be on the top gives me joy in January when I am proper miserable so um some snowdrops and crocus and then obviously the tulips that I had said to you and then something that worked really well in my garden this year was alliums <laughs> and the flowered ages so they gave me that gap from like May and June the alliums Obviously there's so many different varieties, but I'll show you the ones that I'm on about. Um, they did really well and the bees absolutely love them and they make for a nice dried flower too. Um, what didn't work? I haven't bought many, so daffodils did well. Um, I love the different varieties of them. I have common yellow ones in the front that I need to divide up. I tend to get drawn to like the white, double and triple headed daffodils, but they did well. There is no spring, board, spring bulbs in the, where are we? The border over there I'll put in a little, cause obviously I made that border in December last year and I didn't put any spring bulbs into it. And um, so that needs some. Oh, something that worked really well last year is bulb containers. So the lasagna planting. So I'll put a link to last year's video if you want to check that out where I did some lasagna bulbs. And then if you look at my spring garden video, you'll see what they look like when they were sitting in front of the greenhouse. So I had um, no containers in the front garden. So I think I might get some of the little lasagna sets to do some pots for the front um, so I have a little bit of colour in the front because last winter I was all about the colour in the back because selfish it's I look out the window I spend so much time in the kitchen and that's what I wanted to see and um, so yeah right I'm gonna finish my tea and wait for Karen are you going to come inside Lenny <laughs> oh <laughs> she doesn't like the rain <laughs>
Me and Karen just came for um, our tunnel. We weren't expecting the Christmas set. <laughs> and I was, I was getting my hand trial and I was like, Karen, don't get too excited. But there's a Christmas section. <laughs> It's October it's like 5th. 5th of October as I'm filming this today. It's very early but done. Fine by us. Is it comfy, it's Karen? So comfy. <laughs> oh, so much info. Even the little acorns in the and in the fabric runner. It's so pretty. Me and Karen like to come places that we can't afford, and then we pretend that <laughs> we're like <laughs> just making ourselves an I actually just One day we're gonna get kicked out. <laughs> Just gotten back. Miss Blondie. You would not think it's the same day. <laughs> it's beautiful out now. And it was literally lashing when I was with Karen on that drive. And then just as we got back, it like brightened up now. The ground is still like really wet. It is a little bit chilly. But I don't think it's to rain now for the rest of the day, which isn't too bad. So yeah, it has definitely picked up. I honestly thought it was gonna be like that dull for like the rest of the day. I do love <laughs> Irish weather, all seasons in one day. So I have just made a cup of tea. Are you surprised by that? No. I didn't get too much. Had a bit of, <laughs> tiny bit of self-control, not a lot. I'll talk you through the bits that I got. I, I didn't get any tulips, I don't think, because I knew I had bought. I'm waiting on my order to come from Mr. Middleton. So I did get an impulse buy pink muscari, a little bit of an impulse, but let's have a little look at what I got. Yeah, before I get into showing you the bulbs I got, I did buy a geranium Jeanette. So <laughs> this was an impulse buy. I absolutely adore hardy geraniums and I'm gonna divide the pink one that is in that corner there. I'm gonna divide that up and make more of it for the front. I just love them. And I have the darker purple one. But when I saw this one, I've never seen like a hardy geranium that's in this pink, hang on, the sunlight. See that pink shade? I just think it's lovely. And there was only one of them. And I'm wondering like, I can put it in for autumn, just leave it to settle it'll grow next year and then next year i can divide it into more plants but i just thought the color of it was lovely so geranium jeanette was an impulse buy but i mean there's worse things we could impulse buy so we'll just leave janet there so i'm gonna start with 
um, <laughs> what am I thinking? What am I saying? I'm going to start with these ones, but I'm going to show you what they're for. So, um, for any of my OGs, well, not my OGs, if you watched watching my videos last year, you'll know that this border wasn't here. So, there is no spring bulbs in this border because I had dug it up, like, just before Christmas. So, there's just, like, the perennials and some verbena dying off. So, the good thing is, because everything is like still here <laughs> hello nettle there is some weeds that's okay um so i can kind of plant the bulbs around like the existing plants that are here now i've just noticed there's absolutely loads of nettles in here so once i take these nettles out i'll have loads of space to plant but um i've noticed that the soil is damper in this border so i was thinking Good old hydrangea Annabelle, they need water. Maybe she would be happier in this border. Just a thought that I had. So the next bulbs that I'm gonna show you are intended to go in here. Um, and then there's already bulbs in these two. And then this is going to get the red perennial ones. And then like some for the front. So a daffodil to go in the border I just showed you. I got some of these. They're a nice height, so 45 centimeters. So nice daffodil height. I just like them because they're white with the pop of like orange in the middle. I don't have this variety in the garden. The daffodils in the front, I have white ones. I have white ones with like triple heads and I have your standard yellow ones, but I don't have this variety. So that is for a clump in that side. And then I got this, which is a cut. So it's designed for dried flowers and it's a little packet, but it's full of alliums. Now I have some of these alliums already in my garden in other places, but I just thought the colors of these, because there's lupins in that flower bed and the lupins are these colors. So when the lupins are getting going around about like June time, these will be like in flower as well. So there are different varieties of alliums and because I have some of them already in the garden, I know that the bees absolutely love them. So I have these two to go into that side border and I'm gonna just plant them a bit, not whimsical, but like not perfect. Like I might do a daffodil, allium like a little clump um like a bit woodlandy bit wildy like not too perfect and then i picked up so this is the woodland garden so it's a mix of like there is some snowdrops i think there's some muscari let me turn it around yeah oh i don't know how to pronounce this Pushkinia, Pushkinia, Fertilia, Narcissus, but they're just tiny ones, so teeny tiny daffodils. Let me see if I can bring this closer. And then, oh, I don't know what that one is. Chionodoxa. <laughs> Girl needs to learn the Latin for these. So this little mix, I was thinking, you know, my woodland corner down here. That's out and walking. So there is some, um, oh, this is just, thriving at the moment. Brunnera is my favourite. If you pick up one plant for spring, Brunnera. This has beautiful blue um, flowers on it. Absolutely love it. So I, again, I can plant these around the gaps um, that I have. So some of those ferns are evergreen. I think, see this fern here? That's not evergreen. I think it dies back. I know one of the fern, it dies back. Those green thingies are evergreen, but I think those ones down the back might die off, but at least I kind of know where I can plant things. And then they're a type of muscari. Wasn't expecting them to flower and they're flowering at the moment. So at least like the hosta is gone. Good old hosta is DED, but I can plant around things. So I bought this to go around here. So in the front garden, um, just underneath, I also have a little tree. Um, if you go back to my spring videos, there is a shrub that has a lovely pink floral blossom around about April time. And then I have my prunus, is it a prunus? Don't know the name of it, it's a little cherry blossom tree. So I got, I know bluebells can be a little bit invasive, but I was thinking 
when the established it can be invasive but I thought a few bluebells underneath would be cute and then I can just remove the extra ones that grow and even put them in the grass I thought it would look look cute so I just got one packet of them and then I just got some snowdrops and again I just thought some snowdrops did I get two packets oh no I only got one I thought one packet of snowdrops one packet of bluebells for underneath that area in the front and then here's my impulse buys so when I was in the orchard it was like I don't know what they had called the unusual cottage plants or like unusual plants but these are little and never heard of this had you blondie have you ever heard of this um they only grow 10 centimeters and I, I'm thinking terracotta pots with like they could even be maybe potentially indoor or in the greenhouse. I'm thinking a cute little terracotta pot, stick the bulbs in them and put some sphagnum moss or something around the top to dress it and style it. I just thought it were lovely. But what I might do is like maybe keep some in a pot, but like how pretty are they? Um, and they're only like eight centimeters tall. These are 15 centimeters and these are 10. I have never seen pink muscari. I have some um, muscari in the front and they're purple and they're taller, but I just thought these are very cute, like pink ones. So I'm thinking like a mix of these in like a terracotta pot would be cute, but then I might also put like some in the ground, but like near the edge. Um, I thought they would be quite like a little clump of them, but actually all three of these in a little clump would look lovely, wouldn't they? Um, but I just thought, what gave me the idea was these are sitting in a terracotta pot and they just give me joy. Like, how nice is that? So I could just leave them sitting in the greenhouse and then like they can just work away over winter. Um, and then, yeah, they're just, like how pretty is so They kind of look like little buttercups. So I think that's everything I got. Oh, actually, <laughs> I did buy, <laughs> Blondie, what did I buy? <laughs> I had to get a um, a new trowel and fork because I just went to grab my tea. I had to get a new. So somewhere in my garden is one of these, probably in the soil, and I haven't found it. So I have a bad habit of um, a very bad habit actually, leaving things outside and not putting them away or like putting them in stupid places and then I can't find them. So a lot of the time I will use a, a tool. It's always the little ones, the big ones I put away. The shovels are always away, spades, everything. But these little things, there is probably one of these sitting in the flower bed in the front. I look everywhere, I can't find them. But I had a lovely one of these and I like this brand as well. They're nice and thick, like they don't rot easily because I leave them outside and um, can't find it for life me. I was like, this is the last, I said it's Karen, I said this is the last time I'm buying one of these and I'm going to, every time I finish using it, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna put it in the shed and I'm gonna mind it and I'm not going to, like I guarantee when I go out now planting bulbs, I'll probably find the other one. But please let me know you do the same. It's like gloves, like, I could leave a glove sitting on a bed and come back two years later and find it. The thing is half composted. Anyway, there's <laughs> bugs living in it. That's what I got up to in today's video. Next video, I'm waiting, you know, I'm gonna wait on my order to arrive from Mr. Middleton and it's still a tiny bit mild to plant. So I know some of the bulbs, like you get away plant your daffodils and everything now, like in October. Some of them need it to be a bit cooler. One of them, it was like maximum planting temperature was like 15 degrees, minimum minus something. Basically, I'm gonna give it another week and maybe next week's video, I'm going to, I think what a job I need to do is weed that side border. I know nettles are lovely and they make tea and they're great for wildlife, but in, like when I want a pretty border, I'm gonna put some wildlife plants, friendly plants in. And um, so I'm gonna weed them nettles before they take over, over winter. A weed and a mulch and a bulb plant in that section and then plant my other bulbs so next week's video we'll do some planting we won't be looking we'll get hands hands on hands in if you want some spring bulb inspiration i'm not saying i was any good like i say this is how i garden not how to garden but i'll put a link to the like spring videos 
in the description um, and you can check them out and you can see the tulips that kind of grew and you can have a little look back um, if you want to get like some inspiration. But just off the top of my head, my favourite spring bulbs, hyacinths, alliums, I love white daffs, double headed tulips and rice. I'll let you know how we get on with the perennial tulips, we'll follow along with that. Snowdrops, crocus. I do like some muscaries. I have one in the front that I need to move. The problem is I planted it too far back so it gets swamped by other things. What is my else is my other favourite spring bulb? I feel like I mentioned kind of the common one. But if there is an unsung spring bulb hero in your garden, let me know. Share amongst the community so we can get some inspo. Share in the comments section. Let me know what is on your spring bulb wish list. And then next week, I think, yeah, I need to get planting then. That's what I got up to today. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to my channel, check out my recents, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.